GoPro cameras have always been impressively compact while still being able to capture some incredible looking footage, although once users add that waterproof housing the entire unit becomes more bulkier. That's not a problem for most looking for a small waterproof camera to take to the beach, but for extreme sports, size and weight can make all the difference. After three years of development, GoPro give us this tiny cube of clever optics, the smallest and lightest GoPro camera ever produced, the Hero 4 Session. Being 50% smaller and 40% lighter than other standard GoPros, the Hero 4 Session takes on the same form as the Polaroid Cube, which is also square in shape and around the same size. Miniaturization doesn't come cheap though. Priced at $400, the Session is the same price, if not slightly more expensive, than the Hero 4 Silver, which not only carries higher resolutions and an abundance of extra shooting modes, but also incorporates that built-in LCD display. So what makes the Hero 4 Session an attractive proposal? Let's take a closer look. As with other cameras in the Hero 4 range, the Session is on clear display at the top of the package, secured with the typical seal and held in place with a buckle mount onto that very useful plastic base, under which we have the user manual and some stickers. Although the camera comes pre-mount in its frame mount, an alternative low profile frame mount is also included in the package. Along with the usual flat and curved adhesive mounts and anti-vibration plug, a new vertical mounting buckle, along with another new ball joint buckle, both with rubberized vibration dampening inserts built right into them, and a micro USB to USB cable used for charging and data transfer. A pretty standard package when it comes to GoPro cameras. The Hero 4 Session looks like a cube with rounded edges, breaking away with a radical new design in comparison with the GoPros we've previously become accustomed to. It's not the most aerodynamic design, but it has a much lower profile and smaller surface area than its siblings. Regardless of the new shape, the Session is compatible with previous GoPro accessories thanks to the included frame mounts, one providing the typical GoPro mount at the very bottom whereas the included lower profile frame mount incorporates a rear attachment point and when used with the new vertical buckle results in the lowest profile GoPro have ever provided. A single clip on the top corner can be lifted, releasing the session unit from the mount. Notice how the camera can be reinserted into any orientation, increasing versatility when mounting the camera to your gear. Upon closer inspection, alongside a small status LED and a microphone input in the top corners, the lens dominates the front of the unit, capable of video capture at the now standard 1080p 60 frames per second, as well as several other shooting modes, the shooting list has several variations, but it's not as exhaustive as a Hero 4 Black or Silver. There's no 4K or 2.7K video capture either, although the session also shoots images in 8 megapixel wide angle, or 5 megapixel medium, with time lapse and burst modes up to 10 photos per second, all rather impressive from such a small design. As you might expect on a camera this small, physical controls are minimal. The top of the unit has the main button that starts and stops shooting, or if pressed for 3 seconds, takes photos at timed intervals. A small strip behind the power button displays current shooting modes and some simple yet useful information although there comes the first downside to the session. Users are unable to change any camera options or browse any settings on the camera itself. There's a reliance on the GoPro smartphone app or the GoPro remote to change any settings, which may be a deal breaker for some, although it incorporates an easy connection process thanks to the built-in wireless capabilities, switched on and off with a second, smaller button on the rear of the unit. Alongside is a second LED and microphone. The dual microphone design enhances audio since the camera automatically switches to the mic that's best suited to optimal audio capture when shooting in windy or high speed conditions. Finally, a side flap opened with a small switch allows access to a micro USB port used for charging the built-in battery and for data transfer, along with the standard micro SD card slot. Note that the session's battery is built in and not removable although GoPro state two hours of recording time should be easily achievable. The unit itself is waterproof to 10 meters with no case being required, a definite plus point to the overall design. Talking of the design, the cube shape looks good and works well when mounting, 
but not so well when it's in your hand. Because it feels the same from every angle, it's sometimes difficult to figure out where the lens is pointing by touch alone. It's just one of those things users need to get used to. Cramming high performance into a small, water-resistant body means the Hero does get a little warm when in use, although it shouldn't affect overall performance. Otherwise, the session is refreshingly simple to use. Press the main button once, and around 4 seconds later the camera is on and recording. Press the same button again and 7 beeps tell you it's turned off. Alternatively, a 3 second button press starts image capture in time lapse mode. Users can take single shots too, but the GoPro app will be needed for that. And that's all there really is to it. Although the camera has a smaller display, which is now a basic strip of information, controls on the camera are extremely limited. As a result, with the Hero 4 session, users will be getting very familiar with GoPro's mobile app. Pairing the unit up with a smartphone is as simple as always and is no different from any other wireless enabled GoPro camera. Once connected, the app opens up a whole new range of possibilities. There's the obvious settings to tweak like resolution, frame rate and megapixels. ProTune lets you tinker with the ISO and sharpness settings, albeit in a limited way, while the photo and multi-shot settings allow you to change the resolution and time intervals of photos. Users can also use the app as a remote control, getting the Hero 4 session to start recording when it's out of easy reach. Finally, users have the ability to view all the content from the session directly on the phone or tablet. All pretty standard GoPro stuff. The wireless remote works in much the same way, providing the ability to start and stop video capture when at a distance, as well as taking single images with relative simplicity. As expected from any GoPro camera, video captured by the session is great. The 170 degree lens does mean you get the typical fisheye barrel distortion that GoPro made famous, but the effect can be reduced during the editing phase if need be. Nevertheless, the Hero 4 session manages to provide higher quality video, but in a much smaller and neater package than other GoPro models. Colours are bright and vivid and quick, sharp movements are captured smoothly and there's a good level of detail. The lack of 4K doesn't appear a major weakness unless you really need professional quality footage. Similarly, image quality was also very good, with good detail and colour reproduction being captured. It can be a little difficult to keep the camera lined up correctly when shooting images while hand holding the device, although using the GoPro app as a viewfinder certainly helps in that regard. When it comes to audio, the session comes with two microphones, one at the back and one at the front, and uses clever software to decide which to prioritise. If you're racing down a hill on a bike, then wind noise might make the front mic useless, but the rear one ideal, and the unit will automatically switch between the two. You won't know when this happens, and whether it actually works well is questionable. Definitely a feature that'll need more testing. The GoPro Hero 4 session is a great achievement and a dream come true for adrenaline junkies who want to capture their exploits with ease thanks to its small size and lack of weight. Above all else, it's super simple to use with its one button operation and for those new to the GoPro family looking for a simple to use, small, lightweight unit, this is certainly a strong contender. The components within the Hero 4 session are more in line with the Hero 4 Black or Silver Edition cameras though, but saying that, so is the price. $400. That's the same price as the GoPro Hero 4 Silver Edition, which comes with extra shooting resolutions, an abundance of extra features, and a built-in touch-sensitive display. Better still, the Hero 4 Silver produces higher quality video output. With its higher bit rate, details are sharper, and dynamic range is a whole lot better. In that regard, many may still find the Hero 4 Silver is still the one to go for. In basic terms, the session will either really call out to you and solve a problem, or it might not make all that much sense right now. If you fall into the latter camp, GoPro does have other cameras they will happily sell you instead. Nevertheless, what really seems to be going on here is that the Hero 4 session is an exercise in engineering. It's small with smart features like the dual mic setup, which we'll likely see trickle up to future flagships. There are also new mounts including a new ball joint quick release which is seriously useful. So in many ways, even though it's still lagging behind the Silver Edition, the Hero 4 session feels like the most refined GoPro yet.